You are listening to Lone Star Community Radio on 104.5 KCZW LP Conroe and 106.1 KZCC LP Conroe and worldwide on IRLoneStar.com. Shall we begin? Hello and welcome to the Ticket Stub. We are doing a special post credit scene interview with Daniel Westwood. It's Connor in Studios with Dick and Chris. Chris, how you doing, man? I'm doing well. I'm very excited. I know. This is, man, you, this, we're, we're riding this parallel train uh, we are, all yeah. the way back to the station. Uh, Dick, how you doing, bud? Doing good. All right, and we're very excited to announce and, and welcome our guest, Daniel Westwood. How are you doing, Daniel? Very well, thank you. Good afternoon, gentlemen. Good afternoon, and I would, I would say welcome from across the pond, except for uh, you're in New York right now, correct? I am indeed, yeah, I'm your side of the pond, yeah, it was a long swim. <laughs> Boy, are yeah. your arms tired, right? Yeah, yeah a little bit, yeah. <laughs> well, uh, well, Daniel, we're excited to have you. Thanks again for making time to do this. Uh, we've got, I think, a lot to talk about. We really want to get to know you, get to know uh, kind of what brought you to the acting world, you know, kind of how you mm-hmm. found your way to it. Uh, maybe talk a little bit about some of the things you've been involved with and uh, some of the opportunities you've had, everything like sure. that. And, yeah, uh, no and, and anyways, so uh, Chris, I'm going I'm to pass it off to you. I think you have some things to say. Well, uh, Daniel's been in a ton of movies. Uh, you can just list them down. Now You See Me Too, Alice Through the Looking Glass, Parallel, Criminal, Criminal, Criminal. Yeah, it's Criminal. Uh, it's French, uh, Criminal. Yes, it's French. Uh, Assassin's Creed, Brothers Grimsby, he was Inspector. He's also my choice. To be the next James Bond, and I've seen some more stuff that he's done since the the thing I watched where I thought he could do it, and uh, it just has solidified that I know that I'm right. Yeah. <laughs> well, I hope so. so. <laughs> so yeah, Daniel's <laughs> like, uh, me too. That's a very kind endorsement. There. Uh, yeah. If we can get some weight behind that, I'm definitely on board. But no, well, oh yeah, well, you have the full support of the ticket stub, Daniel. Yeah. I don't know what well, that's going to do for your career, but you've got the full support of us. Too, um, too bad we're too bad we're Americans and our opinion doesn't count at all. But. Well, <laughs> that's probably no, true. That's really ridiculous. No, that's amazing. Thank you. Uh, it's been very kind. Well, Daniel, well, let's just start. At, you know, just kind of give us a brief like, wh- where did you grow up and how did you find your way into the world of acting? Well, um, well, I, I grew up. I was actually born in Wimbledon. You know, where the, the tennis tournament. Yeah, I heard of it. Help. Yep. Um, uh, which is in southwest London, and spent pretty much all of my life. In, uh, or at least very near to London, uh, South London mainly, which is pretty gritty, but uh, you know it's good fun. Um, uh, my parents were both professional musicians, uh, so I kind of grew up. They were on, you know, between them on every hit record uh, from kind of the mid 1950s to the 1990s. Really, my mom. So they were like back, like they were like studio musicians for. Yeah, yeah. For, yeah. My mom's uh, they're both both session musicians. My mom's a okay. backing singer, so she's on everything. You know, she's on. Uh, uh, all the Jimi Hendrix records. Really? And, oh, wow. Uh, James Brown and Beatles. and. But they uh, worked out of London, though? They worked out of Wimbledon or out of the London area? Oh, no, no, no. Everywhere. My mom, oh, you know, okay. My mom's played Carnegie Hall and, and Madison Square Garden and, and LA and that sort of stuff. And uh, She's on all the Baccarat hits and all sorts of stuff from years back. Uh, and my dad's a, a, a bass player. So, uh, so growing up, did, did you get to meet all those guys growing up? Like all those different I musicians? Met, I met a lot of these people, yeah. I used wow. to kind of drown their kids in the swimming pool, like <laughs> which is very normal to me, but kind of quite pretty surreal uh, when you kind of either tell other people about it or, or look back on it. You know, yeah. we'd, uh, we'd say we're going over to a friend's for lunch and I bring a school friend or something, open the door and it's, I don't know, uh, Dusty Springfield or something. And like, <gasps> <You know? laughs> uh, so yeah, it was, it was, it was fun. It was, it was colorful, if nothing else. Great parties. That's, that's what I, I do remember I as a child. And you've got I some musical, do. you've got some musical background from that now as well, right? I, yeah, 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 I do. I, I, well, it kind of all stemmed from the same thing, really. I went to uh, kind of arty schools, you know, music, drama, and dance, and that sort of stuff when I was is, very little. Is that yeah. where uh, mini pops came into the <laughs> the God, uh, you saw that as well. the fold? I, I did, yeah. You, well, you, well, you posted well, it on Twitter, so I, I follow your Twitter. Oh, I did. So I yeah, right. yeah, yeah. That's that was that was a while back. Things from that just keep cropping what up. What is mini pops? What is that? It's it's kids pop. <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> In the UK. Uh, oh, tell yeah, me there's video uh, of that. There is, yeah, somewhere you can find <laughs> stuff on, on YouTube and stuff. Uh, I'm not, I was, I was, I think officially the youngest member and kind like, of the last, the last batch of mini pops that came through because quite a few people came through the mini pops. It's like the uh, British Mickey Mouse 
Mickey Mouse Club, right? <laughs> yeah, Mickey Mouse with Disney or something like that. We sung you know, medleys of, of monkeys and Beatles hits and, and all that sort of stuff when uh, when I was really very young. I think I was seven when I started doing six or seven when I started doing all that. And yeah, I wasn't forced into it. I was just uh, a, an arty little kid and did drama and was quite outgoing and stuff. So they said, hey, why don't you come along and do this? Because my mum and dad were obviously in the industry and knew, uh, I think one of the producers or something. So bring him along, we give him a little, little trial and we kind of went from there. But, um, yeah, that was good fun, but very, very embarrassing when people keep bringing it up when you're 38. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, it, yeah. Was, it was fun then, and now it's really terrible when everyone talks about it all the time. Yeah, that's yeah. what I was going to say. You yeah. know, he, he is 38, and, and I'm about to be 38. We're the same age, but if yeah. you look at him you and you look same, at me. Same physique, too. Yeah, yeah. That's, uh, yeah, <laughs> completely different. Yeah. He, he looks great. I look like a guy run over by a bus. I, you know. <laughs> Chris, were you also uh, a, a, Chris, ju- a junior martial arts champion? You give yourself way too much credit. Yeah, 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 right. Yeah. Well, but yeah, but that's the thing. I was going to ask you, how, how, yeah. you know, I'm the same age as you. How do you stay in shape? Because well, it's uh, ridiculous for me. Yeah, it's, 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 uh, it's, a, it's definitely a vocation, you know. You have to be kind of devoted and stuff. It becomes, I guess, in, you know, I really do for, for my career and stuff that I chose and, and, and as we'll probably get into in a little while, I did, you know, through the martial arts, I got into the kind of the movies through um, through fight stuff and action sequences. You know, the movies have got to be more and more realistic these days. So they want real policemen, real firefighters, real martial artists, real, you know, kung fu experts, that sort of stuff. So, um, you know, you've, you've generally got to be, know what you're doing because there's always somebody or several people out there that's going to go, ah, no, that's, that's not realistic. It wouldn't have been done like that, you know. So I think they're very keen on, on getting stuff as, as close to reality and as close to, you know, the mark as, as they can, really. So, uh, yeah, I, I, I got in that way. Um, so so, so that, is that how you got into the movie world then? Because that was, that was a question I definitely that's had. That's probably how he's in mm-hmm. all these mm-hmm. movies. Was it, was it, it was through your – because you were a junior, a junior mixed martial arts champion – as we yeah. as we all were, right? And, no. and, and as a <laughs> not, champion, not, not, not mixed martial arts as today, like MMA. It was I just did a few different disciplines because oh, really so like it was perfect. maybe like so taekwondo I, I, and karate or something like that. Yeah, I started off on on, on judo when I was five, I think, because uh, yeah, I was a big kid from not fat, but you know, big for my age. My mum fed me well, and my family had sort of uh, you know British and Irish roots, so we're all quite quite big and, and quite well built, I guess. Um, what? So I kind of got picked on by all the older kids when I was little. So I had to learn to defend myself because I was a, a big, gentle giant, they used to call me. So, uh, well, you know who else does judo? James Bond. He does. <laughs> he certainly does. That is true. Oh, How great. many times are we going to tie that in? Uh, Chris is going to bring it up, lot, I think, in every time. Times. A lot more times. Yeah. So, so then, Daniel, so what was the first opportunity you had in film to utilize your martial arts training to get a role? Um, I think... I think probably. I mean, there was a, there was a few bits, and I, I tried out for a few things, but obviously I I, I lacked the experience and the on screen experience and stuff. Like I, I went to theatre school when I was young uh, and trying to do theatre, you know. But as a as a kid, uh, you know, projecting to the back row, not, it wasn't really my. I wanted to be a, a movie star, be on TV and that sort of stuff, like everyone does, kind of at that age, you know? or a, or a footballer or a DJ or something equally. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but yeah, uh, I guess the first opportunity came. Kind of out of the blue, actually. I knew a few people that were doing uh, just a bit of kind of extra work and stuff to supplement their income. Because I, I don't know if you know, but like a, a lot, a huge portion of all the big movies are made in the, the UK these days because of the, the, the tax break. You can get over there. It's like a, a third cheaper uh, to make a you know a 300, 400 million dollar movie in the UK than it is over here in in, in the US. Because uh, like I say, the, the the government gave yeah, uh, like no mon- no movie is made in Hollywood anymore. Like that's where everybody lives. But then they all yeah, fly to like yeah, yeah, Georgia right, yeah. or London to make their films. Yeah, yeah. So like you know, all the Marvel films, all the Disney films, the Bond films, uh, so many war movies, uh, a lot of Spielberg stuff, Ready Player One, all this recent stuff is all coming out of the UK. So it, it's it's been insane. Like Captain America was made in the UK. Really? Like, okay. Yeah. yeah this is, so uh, it's 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 kept. Me and a lot of people are very, very busy for the last 10 years or so, which has been amazing. But um, I, I imagine so. To, Go ahead. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Back to the original question. I think my first big opportunity came with Snow White and the Huntsman, I think. Yeah, that's what IMDb's got it listed as. I want to just read yeah. a few of your roles, a few of the things yeah. you've got. There's a be... lot of stuff that's, that's not on there as well. Okay. It was kind of smaller things or, or you know, uh, things where I didn't think Late night worth things. Put, putting up on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's, yeah. that's under a different name. Yeah. <laughs> hand, hand doubling. Harrison Ford or something. There you go. <laughs> well, you, you've, you've played a special action soldier. You've played an MI6 agent, 
a special action soldier, a British soldier, Secret Service agent, uh, uh, you know, a Spanish military guard, uh, as Guardian God. I mean, you've had a lot of military opportunities in all these different movies. Yeah. Uh, and yeah, so, but mostly when you're when you're when you're in these roles, is it are, are there ever speaking roles, or is it mostly kind of just you know trying to blend into the background, or, or are you getting some direction, or what's that like for you? Oh no, absolutely no. I mean, it, like I say, it started. I never really. Uh, I I did a little bit of extra work to start off with, just to to kind of get a feel for it and see what was going on, and, and quickly caught the bug and thought, damn, this is really what I want to do. I love it. I love you know being on on set and being in front of camera and that sort of stuff. So I kind of started off. Um, you know, it was a kind of a baptism of fire. I didn't really know what I was doing or where it was going to go, but people seemed to appreciate me and, and what I did and my my, my attitude and, 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 I guess, professionalism and stuff. Uh, I do like a laugh and a joke. That's generally how we get through stuff in Britain. Everyone has a ridiculous sense of humor because it makes the day go a lot quicker, basically. But, um, you know, and, and in terms of the professional side of stuff, uh, opportunities just arose, really, and kept, sort of came about from... from from nothing, I guess, and kind of snowballed a little bit. But like I say, I, I, I did a little bit of extra work, but not 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 too much, mainly on uh, TV shows and stuff. But um, in the movies, it was generally always action or fight stuff, uh, which is pretty involved. You know, I had um, a few fight sequences with, you know, big actors and, and stuff like that and other stuff where, you know, I know it's me. You can see what's going on very clearly and everything, but it's kind of quick or I'm wearing, you know, masks or I look very different from my usual appearance. So it wouldn't necessarily look like me, I guess. But um Well I yeah, have to I have to fanboy out for a second because you you were inspector. Uh, yeah. And I I I've I've just gotta ask you because I've never talked to someone that's uh-huh. been in a James Bond film. What is that even like? Like it's gotta be bigger than life when you're on the set for something like it that. Was, it was very surreal. I mean like like you say, I'm, I grew up being uh, a Bond fan as well. Um so you know, imagine what it'd be like for you walking around and Daniel Craig walking past. Hey guys, you know, and uh, uh, that sort of stuff. But uh, I did all the end, the basically all the main end sequences uh, on Westminster Bridge, and you know when the helicopter crashes and, and that sort of stuff. I just but, watched uh, it last night again just to prepare oh, yeah. for this. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> I'm not kidding. Uh, I did, but yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, the the best thing for me, which was amazing, uh, I mean, obviously it's Bond, it's very surreal. But kind of, you get into a mold. I've, I've been, you know, working in the industry, and, and you kind of get used to. It. I, I guess from my my background around my parents and, and lots of other famous musicians and, and singers and God knows what over the years. But um, sorry, can you hear my WhatsApp going off in the background? Is that just for me? <laughs> no, we can't. Oh, good. Okay, cool. Does he keep sending me messages? Let me just mute that. <laughs> Um, Popular well, guy. You, yeah. You know, <laughs> my, I got a question for you since we're kind of discussing you know, London and England having been a big movie place for that past 10 years. What brings you to New York? Oh, wow. Um, well, a, a number of things. Uh, it, 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 it's, it feels, I don't know, it's, it's, it's a weird thing. I kind of oddly expected to end up here at some point and, and kind of always wanted to. I felt uh, a bit of an affiliation with it. I, I know a lot of Americans and, and uh, New Yorkers in, in the UK. We celebrate Thanksgiving before we came here with a whole bunch of them and stuff, which uh, we don't do Thanksgiving in the UK. You know, just Christmas is a, a slightly bigger event, I think, uh, which kind of covers both holidays, really. If they start advertising for Christmas in, like, September, you know, it's ridiculous. <laughs> um, but, um, yeah, a, a few things. Uh, I have a few contacts who told me, you know, come over here and uh, people to introduce you to and stuff. Also... Uh, my missus is, uh, is able to transfer from the London office to the New York office, and is about three minutes away down here, Great. Uh, which was a big, big factor because yeah. um, you know then we have somewhere uh, stable, a home from home, if you like, and uh, you know I'm not just out here on my own and uh, don't have enough running around saying you know where the hell am I, and that sort of stuff. So <laughs> it, 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 all, it all adds up. There's a whole lot of stuff really, but kind of a lot of factors that, that came about. But um, yeah, I mean the I'm seeing people regularly, and it seems to be going really nicely and uh, taking off, kind of, I guess, a lot quicker than I, I thought it would as well. Well, great. I'm, I'm sure you're hoping that this this move to New York is going to leverage you into maybe some some larger opportunities. Uh, Let's hope so. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, if, you're definitely, I'm definitely, I'm going to possibly stand out a little bit more because of being, you know, English and all the rest of it. It's a little bit different to, yeah. uh, I, I think, what I, you know, other people over here at the moment and stuff. There's a lot of filming going on around here at the moment, so I don't know yeah. about. Movies. I know Spider-Man has, has been filming here recently and stuff, but um, 
just walking around the streets the other day, around uh, Tribeca, I'm, I'm sort of in a financial district at the moment, as you can see, a little bit around here, uh, Ellis Island in the background over there. All right. Uh, uh, yeah, just the other day walking around, there was a, a Netflix thing, Power, being filmed, another show called Deception, and, oh, and uh, Billions as well, which I've okay. watched mm -hmm. a bit yeah. of in the past. That's a good show. Do, do people ever stop you on the street and think that you're, uh, think that you're Tom Hardy? Does that ever happen? <laughs> uh, I've never been stopped on the street, but I do get a lot of lingering looks like, <laughs> I, I know that. I look <laughs> but it's kind of one of those ones where I, you know, it, I don't know if I've heard, uh, you know, famous people saying before, people stop and say, hi, how are you? And all sorts of stuff. And they, you know, then they go in, oh, Christ. I thought there was someone I went to school with or something. It's just that guy off the TV. Um, so I don't know if it's kind of a, an, an accumulation of um, lots of bit parts and, and being in a lot of stuff. Um, I did uh, Black Mirror recently. As yeah, well, yeah. Was, was, uh, Which that was that there. was my favorite episode of the season four of Black Mirror, by the way, the one that you were in. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah, it's good. A lot, a lot of people have been saying that it kind of that was their, uh, their favorite episode as well. So it stands out a little bit more, I think. But um, I, I think it's one of those things where no one knows who I am, but they're like, you look from there. You're one of like those faces. Like, hey, wait a minute. Yeah. <clears throat> All right. Well, so. we have a, we have a little bit of time left. We got about five or five or so minutes. Uh, Chris okay. has put together a quiz, and I have no idea what this quiz is going to yeah. say or do. I'm so. sorry. I didn't tell <laughs> I didn't tell you about this, but I I would That's like right. to give you a, a little test. This is a James Bond test okay. because you know I got to oh, be God. sure. I got to be sure. Right. Oh God. Oh, this is about whether he's Before, fit to be James yes, Bond. Whether he's I fit. mean, that might be why he moved away. Yeah. <laughs> because he doesn't want that role, or he doesn't want to keep. Oh, I think he does. Well, uh, actually, Daniel Daniel Craig lives just up the road. I'm told. So. Uh, oh, cool. oh, there you go. You should go bother him. Maybe you can yeah. get him. living in. Actually, we have we have the same realtor, believe it or not. <laughs> oh well, there you go. So. Hey, if you, if you have the same realtor as Daniel Craig, I think things are going okay. Yeah. Right? I also I also feel like that's something IMDb would put on their yeah, like, trivia. trivia. <laughs> it's like, oh, they met to the same realtor. I'm definitely at the lower end of the market. Okay. At the moment, well, I do not have the same realtor as Daniel Craig, but. No. <laughs> All right, let's, let's, let's quiz it okay, up. Man. All right, so here's the first cool. question. Okay. It's six questions. Uh -huh. The James Bond movies are based on a series of novels by what British author? Ian Fleming. That is correct. All right, one for one so far. So good. What was the first James Bond movie? Oh, God. Uh, was it Casino Royale? Was that the very first? I, uh, uh oh. Well,. No, Chris is not acting well, very confident. We, it's, it's it's Doctor No, according to the sheet that I am. But there's a couple that are ah. they did make one before that. So. Well, then what was you, that? Yes, one? well, he's technically right. That was a, that was on television. Casino uh, Royale was on okay, okay. TV. Okay, so we'll give you a half we'll, point. We'll half, half point. Half one and a half. half. Right. Okay. Who was the second actor to portray James Bond in a feature film? Ooh, oh gosh, um, I'm a terrible Bond like knowledge guy. I don't know very much about him. It was. Second Bond, God, um, wasn't George Lazenby? It was, yes, oh, correct. Wow. Okay. All right. What James wow. What James Bond film features Christopher Walken as billionaire industrialist Max Zorin? Oh wow, oh, God, I should know this one. I love Christopher Walken as well. He's great. Uh, oh gosh, I think I'm gonna have to pass. Just throw one out there. Throw a Bond out there. Oh God. Um, you won't look stupid because I'm gonna guess one that'll be even worse. So. Uh, Living Daylights. I don't know. Oh, no, it was a, a View to a Kill. Ah, Timothy Dalton. All right. All right, so I think he's got like two and a half out of four. Right now. <laughs> hey, but no, he's ahead of the, he's ahead of the curve. Okay. There's the curve. Oh, there is a curve. Yeah, Daniel Craig failed this. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he did. Yeah. Uh, okay. His realtor told us. Who performed the theme song? Who performed the theme song for Live and Let Die? Oh, um, oh gosh. Well, obviously, the original was Paul McCartney. That's correct, was, uh, yes. Yeah. And um, this is this is the extra credit, the oh. last one. All right, if you get Just, this right, you you actually get the role. It's not. It's more of an interpretation. <laughs> we have a lot of power, so it's it's, it's more of an interpretation. It'd be nice if it was that simple. Eh? <laughs> Just for me, will mm -hmm. you say the famous line? No. <laughs> he said no. No. <laughs> no, no, I didn't say no. Oh, okay, I thought you said no. That caught me completely off balance. Um. Now he's gonna get in Zen mode. Know, Wait, everybody, quiet down. Making it weird. Quiet down. Quiet down. Oh, Let's, thinking... Here we go. The name is Bond. James Bond. 
There you go. Oh, that was actually that was good. Great. Yeah, that was yeah, really, that was great. That was actually really good. That was really good. I, I did not. Uh, I felt like that. I don't know. I, just, I didn't like where that was going, but then you you did a good job. You did a good job with <laughs> yeah, that. That was, that was, was a, could have been a lot worse. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry. That's yeah. I put you on the spot well, there. What we'll do is we'll make Chris do it on the uh, Thursday's episode and see. <laughs> see and compare it. Hey, so I'll need, do we, it right now. We need to cut that audio clip and just be playing yeah. them like one after the other, right? You know, side by side. Actually, Chris, do it. No, no, don't do it. We got, we, uh, <laughs> we, no, we got to tease it for the show. Okay, it for the show. Go on, Chris. How's your English accent, Chris? Dark? Oh, that's awful. It well, can't be well. good. <laughs> it's not that bad. Uh, <laughs> yeah, he tries so Did hard. a British guy just come into the studio? Yeah. Uh, Daniel, is there, is, there, is there anything you want us to plug? Anything we could point people to that you want? You know, anything we can direct them? Maybe your Twitter, maybe something you've been in that you really want people to check out? Uh, not really often. No, I mean, if, if people want to have a look at my, my Twitter and IMDb and stuff after this, that would be lovely. Uh, there's nothing I'm here particularly to plug. Um, All right. What's your Twitter? Um, Will you say it, say it for my everybody? My Twitter is, is at DP Westwood, as it sounds, at DP Westwood. All right. And uh, you, can, you can check him out on IMDb, Twitter. and you'll realize that he's been in, like, every movie that you've seen over the last five or six years. And uh, you just didn't even know, you know, he's that guy that's making every movie great, and you didn't even realize he was there. And so, uh, so Daniel, really appreciate it. Uh, we do want to make sure that everybody listening uh, knows that we do a show live every Thursday at noon uh, on 104.5 and 106.1 FM, and also on IRLoneStar.com. You can listen worldwide. You can check out our YouTube, our podcast feed. Daniel, thanks again so much for being with us today, man. You're welcome. It's been a pleasure. Thank hey, you. Hey, good luck, and we look forward to seeing you on a lot of other bigger roles coming up in the future. Uh, for Dick and Chris, this is Connor for the Ticket Stub. For our post credit scene, we're signing off. Thank you for checking out this production of Lone Star Community Radio. Lone Star Community Radio is Montgomery County's community radio station. Don't forget to check out this show and many others across the Lone Star Community Radio Network. Either live on Conroe's FM 104.5, 106.1, the Lone Star Internet Radio app, or IRLoneStar.com's live audio stream, and on replay on podcasts, Channel 12, Our City TV and Conroe, or Channel 21, KVQT in Houston, and of course, their YouTube channel. This production is copyrighted and all rights are reserved by Lone Star Community Radio. Have a question regarding this program or other Lone Star Community Radio shows? Want to sponsor or start your own show? Call the station message line at 936-647-3776 or email the station at lscrstudios at gmail.com.